Coding made easy. Okay, what's up, everybody? And welcome to your next C plus plus made easy HD tutorial. And this tutorial, we are going to be learning about the auto keyword. And there's a reason why I made you wait until we've done containers before we actually learn about this keyword because honestly, I want you to get sick and tired of creating iterators all the time. And um, the biggest reason why I wanted you to get sick and tired is because I wanted you to actually see the biggest convenience of this keyword. And this keyword is also, is also known as the auto keyword. So if we wanted to, we can make it a variable and we could, we could say it's five. And uh, But what the auto keyword does is that it works somewhat like a template in that it detects based on what you've inputted it detects what you've inputted and then it will convert that variable to that type so for example if I say auto bar and I say um, equals to four then by looking at this it's gonna say okay this looks like an integer so bar when it at runtime it's gonna say okay bar is an integer and so we can display to the screen like uh, like this and we can run it and oh I should put system pause and as you can see it's space number four so nothing amazing right and I want to go even a step further to prove that I'm not going to that I'm not lying so I'm even going to introduce you to another keyword now a lot of people well not a lot but some people might say some people might agree with this keyword some people might not agree with it I've heard that it might not work based on cross-platform I'm not really sure if it if it is cross-platform anymore uh, or if it has problems with cross-platform availability but Anyways, um, just be careful when you use this. That's all I'm saying and then do your research when you're using this But for the sake of this tutorial, we're just gonna be using a simple function called the type ID function and we're gonna say the type ID of variable dot name and What's it gonna do is it's gonna take the type get the type of uh, the variable that you put in there And we call dot name It's gonna take that and display it as a string. Okay, that's all it's gonna do and I'm just going to run this and as you can see it says okay the type is an int so what it did is that it said okay we said auto var and then we put in the value 4 and it's like okay uh, the value 4 looks like an integer so let's convert it to an integer now to those of you who have used the scripting language before say like JavaScript or something like that it's kind of similar to that like whenever you create a variable you won't actually specify the type you'll use a keyword like var or something then you'll let the uh, you'll let the program itself determine what type it is and using the auto keyword is great for for this but when you're thinking to yourself okay this is kind of pointless why would I do that when I can easily specify in and so on and so forth and yeah I understand what you're saying so now let's just create a uh, oh man <laughs> I'm tired let's create uh, let's include the vector class and or you know what let's include map class this is this is better to include a map so we want to traverse through the actual map right and so in order to do that we need to have an iterator so we can always do this and we can say map std string float iterator and um, and we can just name it and we can do that right it works fine right it will work for us um, it's no problem but it's really 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 long so um, let's just just let's just add some things to our, our student and we'll just say student Peter we'll do like what we've done in the in the past tutorial and we'll say Chris and we'll have John and whatever and so we've created an iterator for this and let's say we have another map and we have to it's a different type we have to create a brand new iterator and we want to traverse through that 
and so on and so forth, it becomes kind of annoying to kind of make something, uh, type something this long all the time. And yeah, you're saying, okay, whatever, it doesn't matter, it's long, but you get used to it, suck it up. But it's long, it looks kind of ugly, and um, the people who created C++, they're like, we're lazy, we don't want to have to type this long, huge thing. So they came up with the auto keyword, and the auto keyword can handle um, things like this. So what we're going to do, instead of creating an iterator, what we're going to do is we're going to make a four. We're going to say auto, and we can just call it IT. So say auto IT is equal to student.begin. Then we'll say IT not equals to student.end. And IT plus plus. And we will just, we'll just say IT dot first. IT and a pointer to the first element. And so what did we do? We said auto IT equals student dot begin. So in order to use student dot begin, uh, we need to be using an iterator. So it assumes that IT is an iterator. So once we do this, it's gonna create an iterator and then we're gonna loop till the iterator reaches the end and we're gonna increase it by one, increment by one each time. And by doing this, we run it, it still loops to it and traverse, traverses through every single element in our map and voila so by using this simple keyword it saves us from having to type those super long things and it can help with a lot of different things for example if you don't know what variable type is actually going to store if you have a variable and you don't know what the variable is going to store if it's going to store a string or something like that for example let's say you're looping through say a text file and you don't know if the text file is, if you're gonna be taking in an integer, if you're gonna be taking in a string. Well, you could use the auto keyword and then you could use the type ID or you could use a dynamic cast or something like that in order to check um, the type. And we never learned about dynamic casting, we will learn about casting later on. But you can go and check to see if it is, what type it is, and then based on the type, you can do certain things with it. So the auto keyword is very, very, uh, very useful. And uh, I hope you find a lot of use, and I hope you make good use of it um, in your future programming endeavors. So anyways, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and bye for now.